All right, hi guys. Welcome to Iron Griffin Studio. I need to make some terrain for my 40k board. Um, been thinking about just kind of small scatter terrain pieces, something that's that can just go anywhere really. Most of my games tend to take place on kind of um, urban route, yeah, urban environments really, kind of cities and things, you know. Um, so I'm thinking maybe some barricades. Pretty simple build, um, very versatile. Everyone can use them. I've got a really cool way of making them that I'm sure I'm not the first person to think of this, but it's gonna be cool anyway. And yeah, hopefully they're really cheap, really easy to make. That's kind of my whole thing, so hopefully they are. And uh, let's just crack on with it, shall we? See what we can do. Now this method is super quick, super easy, super cheap and effective. So all you need is an ice cube tray, like the one I've got here. Uh, all it needs to be is kind of square compartments, really. Uh, I used this one because it was just lying around and it was kind of broken along one side and I probably wasn't going to use it for ice. So I mixed up some plaster of Paris and the idea is that you just pour it in these compartments and then once it's dry you can just tap them all out and what you've got is nice square uniform kind of barricade bollards. Um, some people call these dragon's teeth um, or I don't know roadblocks maybe but this is a super effective way of making them. Now this is just me getting the right mixture. It did take me a little while to get the right mixture uh, but I eventually got there and and I thought maybe I'll add some black acrylic paint to this mixture because if at some point the plaster of Paris, which I know is kind of brittle sometimes, if it does chip and does kind of get damaged us in some way, then maybe just making the mixture a kind of greyish concrete colour would make it seem like it's just exposed concrete. And so the bit of black paint in the mix seemed to change the colour to a kind of light grey and I think I achieved a good level of uh, viscosity here for the mix while adding the water and uh, then it was time to get pouring. Now being as careful as possible, just had to pour this mixture into each compartment. Try to ensure you get kind of about the same level in each bit because that will make sure that each barricade is about the same height. Uh, this stuff kind of gets thick really fast so it's probably best to work quite quickly at this point. And then once they are all nice and level, you can just give them a quick tap against the table, try and get all those air bubbles out that might be in there, and uh, make sure that all that plaster settles nice and level, and hopefully you get a nice finish. And there you go, once it's dry, it, I mean, it shouldn't really take any more than about four hours or so to be completely dry, but once it is, you can just try and, I mean, you can see how messy it is there by the cutting mat. You get plaster everywhere, but there you go. They do come out eventually with a bit of persuasion. And uh, they look nice and sharp. Really cool. Very, uh, very neat. Nice flat edges. And then, it's time to get the rest out. Now with these, because they're only made of plaster of Paris, it's actually quite soft. So you can just chip parts away with a file or some sort of sharp tool. If you're going to use a knife, do be careful. Um, but you can just you can make grazes and scuffs and deep cuts and, and bullet holes and all kinds of battle damage on these things. Remember, these things are barricades. They're going to be shot at. You know, they're going to 
they're gonna take a lot of punishment. That's the whole point. So feel free just to get in there and really rough the thing up. And then you have something that looks like this. And that is it is worth saying actually that um you do kind of have to be quite gentle with these. I mean, you are you're being rough with the the plaster, but be kind of gently rough or roughly gentle or something. Because I did break one in completely in half, which you can see at the back there behind my hand. Okay, so these barricades are going to need a base. Um, this one is a six inches long. Um, I want to put four of the individual uh, blocks on each base here. Uh, I'm just making two bases and to stick them down I'm just going to use a, a good amount of tacky glue, a really good amount of tacky glue. Too much tacky glue in fact. And I just put a bit down there. All good. And yeah, just kind of plonk them down in a way that... You know, you've got to have some, some of the good sides facing outwards rather than towards the middle. Yeah, there you go, it's a good amount of tacky glue. I could have used hot glue gun for this bit, but I mean, maybe in retrospect that might be a better idea. And then, while that's drying, I put a little bit of no nails on, just to see how that would work. Um, and this is just to stick down a few of the extra pieces that were chipped off of the blocks earlier. Um, it's definitely worthwhile keeping those parts, because you can use them as kind of fine rubble. Well, not fine rubble, but kind of chunkier than fine rubble. But they are pretty good to add to the piece, just to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. I understand that it is white on white and it looks a little bit white, so but it does look good. Okay, now the next stage is to just to uh, add some PVA to this base. Uh, I'll go around all the chunky parts that you added previously with the non nails and uh, go alongside and in between all of the main blocks. Just really cover that whole thing in PVA. I'm using neat, neat PVA at this point. Uh, you can water it down a little bit if you want to flow a bit better, but I thought neat PVA wouldn't uh, activate any plaster or anything quite so easily. And then we should take a little bit of basing sand. My, my basing sand is just a, an accumulation of different uh, kind of you know grades of, of grit and sand and some large pebble here, which I do not want. That can go away. And then we're just going to dip the whole thing in in the pot and pour the sand all over it. Make sure you get it everywhere until it's all covered. And then just tap off the excess. Okay, now that they've been undercoated, we can move on to some base coating. Now I'm going to use a kind of medium grey, using a very big brush just to get a nice smooth finish. Probably need to go over this piece maybe two or three times, especially over the plaster areas that you've made, because plaster will really suck up all of that paint really, really well. And uh, you'll need to uh, just cover up all the little nooks and crannies, all the cracks and crevices, to get a nice smooth finish and then we can move on to the washing stage which will really darken down all of those colours. And with them all nice and evenly coated in grey, just uh, time to add the black wash. Just add this all over the whole thing. Uh, just. Try not to let it pull so much 
on the top of the bollard so you, you really want it to get it just in into the uh, the details that you've carved into it and uh, if it does pool on top you can just take a piece of tissue and dab off some of that excess and then we can move on to the next step Right, now here we're going to go back over the whole piece with the same grey that you used to base coat the whole thing. So just really run it all over the whole the whole piece, all over the base, all over the details on the on the, the bottom and all over the the top and the sides of the insides of the bollards and everything. Just to really try and pick up uh, that detail again and it kind of subdues that wash, that heavy appearance that the wash gave. And it really helps lighten it back up and give a good contrast. And then to really pick out that top level detail just use a slightly lighter grey than the one you just used and just run it over the very tops of each bollard, of each kind of brick that you've got on the ground just to really highlight those top edges almost giving it kind of an edge highlight but it's it's really more of a very light dry brush. Now at this point I thought it'd be a really cool idea to add a little bit of rebar to the exposed uh, inside areas of each barricade and the idea was just to put a I thought maybe use paper clips but I think I ended up using a little bit of um, kind of wire fencing that I had lying around and I just thought that that might work as a it's a pretty decent uh, analog for rebar. So I drilled a few holes using a Dremel um, and then just kind of fit these things with my fingers and then super glued them into place and then we were ready to paint them. Now I'm using Rhinox Hide because I find this to be an excellent kind of rusty undercoat for metallic uh, old metallic uh, anything really. The next stage will be to dry brush everything that you've painted with Rhinox Hide and we'll be dry brushing it with uh, Riser Rust which is what I'm using here. I'm using an old kind of rubbish looking brush and just really doing quite a heavy dry brush on all the rebar and make sure you get it kind of down the brickwork as well you, know, you you want to kind of make it so that it looks like the the moisture or the rain has has washed that rust right down the rock and kind of created uh, like an iron stain uh, on the whole thing and run it into the parts where water would likely run down, where it would follow a channel down. And now here we're going to take that one step further and I'm just going to use a little bit of, I think it's Seraphim Sepia um, from Citadel and it's just a matter of dragging down some streak marks from where the rust would have kind of ran down the rock and really discolored that kind of grey area and turned it more of a brownie streak. I think this is a really valuable step, it really really adds a lot of uh, character to the piece. Right, now it's time to get some flock on these things. So some people like to water down their PVA, I prefer to use it neat if I'm going to put down some static flock. So just find places where you think maybe a little tuft of grass might have grown. You can use um, grass tufts if you have them, there's no harm in doing that but at the moment I don't have any so I'm just going to use the old fashioned method of actually gluing the flock down. To just find a, a part that you like 
to put a bit of grass there and then I used to, I to use tweezers when I do it just to so I'm minimizing the mess and then tap off the excess okay now the next bit of flock to go on is kind of a dead grass it's very yellow and discolored I think the grass I used previously was um, was like a dry a dry grass or a dying grass or burnt grass or something like that uh, I forget the name of it but um, th a, a nice contrast and a nice mixture of different flocks always goes quite a long way and this is pretty much the uh, the final step in creating the the barricades after this it's just a matter of putting a, a nice hard coat uh, matte varnish over the top and then that should seal all the plaster and everything and it should be nice and durable I like these, they're really cool. I like the rust, I like the rebar that I put in them. Yeah, the, uh, they're really easy to make, quite quite fun to make really, and I mean, can't get any more simple than that I don't think. So yeah, pretty happy with them. I'm gonna go on my 40k board, my next battle, which will be well, God knows when, but hopefully soon. So, that's all for this week. Um, let me know if you want to see anything else in future, anything I can tackle specifically for you guys. Uh, leave a comment or subscribe if you haven't already, and drop a like on the video. All these things can really help support my channel and hopefully get me moving a little bit. And uh, yeah, your support is very much appreciated. So, thanks for now. I will see you again next time. Happy crafting.